Now for this next part B, we're told that at time t seconds after projection, p is 19 meters above the point A. And we've got to find the possible values of t. Now I'm assuming you've seen part A of this question, where we had to show that the initial velocity was 21, 21 meters per second for you. So if you haven't done that part, you can always go back on my website and check that part of the solution out. But for this part, anyway, let's just add to the diagram that we've got. So P is projected initially then with a speed of 21 meters per second upwards from this point A, which is 17 and a half meters above the ground. So we've got this point where we're looking at 19 meters above A. Let's just draw a line across here to illustrate, say, 19 meters. This is not drawn to scale, but uh, hopefully you get some idea of what's going on. So that's 19 meters then. And we can see that P is going to pass through here on the way up at some particular time. We could call it T1 if you like. Let's call it T1, comes up here, comes back down again, and when it's 19 meters, this is going to be T2. Okay, so we've got to find out what T1 and T2 are. And to do something like this, again, it's going to involve the SUVAT-based equations. So for part B here, we've got S for displacement, U for initial velocity, V for final velocity, A for acceleration, and T for time. And we need to set up a positive sense. Again, it doesn't matter which way you take as positive, but normally it's best to take upwards the initial direction of projection upwards as positive. So there we go, we're going to have that as positive. So that would mean that in this case, S, the displacement from A, starting at A, would be plus 19. Okay, it would be plus 19 when it passes through here on its way up and when it's on its way down, S would be 19. So We'll put 19 in for that. U, we know, is upwards, and it was 21, so we'll put that in. V, the final velocity, well, we're looking at the final velocity at this point here, and we don't know anything about that. So we we'll just leave that blank. As for the acceleration, throughout the problem, whether it's going up or down, the acceleration acts downwards. And so that's always going to be in the negative sense. So that's going to be minus 9.8, the acceleration due to gravity. And as for t, well, that's what we're trying to find. Okay. And this suggests that we're going to have a quadratic equation because we're expecting two answers for t. Well, what is the formula that connects S, U, A, and t? We well, should know it. That formula is going to be s equals ut plus a half at squared. So we'll just write it up here, give us a bit of room to just work this through. So we're collecting these variables together, going to use this formula here. So we just need to substitute these values in, so therefore for s, the displacement, it's going to be 19 equals u times t, so that's going to be 21 times t, 21t. And then we've got plus a half times acceleration, which is minus 9.8, and that's multiplied by t squared. So you can see we're getting this quadratic equation because we've got t squared in here. So if we tidy this up, we can do half of the minus 9.8, and that's going to give me minus 4.9 t squared. And like all quadratic equations, we need to rearrange this, make it equal to zero. So I'm going to add 4.9 t squared to both sides and subtract 21 t from both sides. So therefore, what we have is 4.9 t squared minus the 21 t, and then plus 19 equals zero. 
Now, for something like this, normally I would always try and check out if it's going to factorize, but I've got horrible decimals here and I don't like the look of this. So I'm going to turn to the quadratic formula, which hopefully you're familiar with, that if you've got something of the form AT squared minus BT, or I should say plus BT, So normally I'd want to solve this by factorizing, but because it's got decimals here, it doesn't look very pleasant. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So if anything's got the form AT squared plus BT plus C equals zero, we can work out T as being equal to minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So A is 4.9, b is minus 21 and c is the 19. So we therefore have t equals minus b, so that's minus minus 21, so that's 21, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's minus 21, make sure you put that in brackets though for that, minus 21 all squared, minus 4 times a, a is the 4.9, times c, C is the 19, and that's all divided by 2A. So all divided by 2 times 4.9. Okay, now leave you to work that out on your calculator. If I take the negative value first, because that's going to be a value that's smaller than the one that we take with the plus. So if I take the negative value, you'll find it will give me T1, the first time when P comes up through here and has a displacement of 19 meters. The plus value, when we take it, will give us the second value of t, and that would be t2. So you can see that therefore t1, if you work it out, turns out to be 1.2977 and so on. And for the second value of T, T2, let's say, that's when you take the plus here, you'll find that you get 2.9880 and so on. Now if we round these to, let's say, three significant figures, then we've got the first time T1 is going to be 1.30 seconds and the second value of the time, t2, well that's going to be 2.99 seconds. And both of those are given to three significant figures, 3SF. And you can see with answers like this, you wouldn't have been able to factorize this anyway. So we had to use the formula. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea on that particular part of the question.